So the replication layer split testing is with the Evocati and all signs point to successful test and some fixes to what we have been waiting for a very long time. This video is for those of you who may have always wondered how all the technology of Star Citizen works and who either hasn't read or didn't follow the public information available today on the subject provided by CIG. So I wanted to have a little fun visualizing my personal understanding of that information and sharing it along with you. Hopefully this format is fun to watch and helps you better understand how it all works underneath the hood. For this episode, I wanted to break down the underlying architecture related to the replication layer split and then discuss what that means for me and you as we play the game. Without further delay, let's dive in. So here we are, the players of Star Citizen in front of our gaming computers, logging into the Star Citizen game client today. As we do so, we are connected to the replication layer service, which in the live build at the time of creating this video, is coupled with the DGS, or dedicated game server. The DGS is where the simulation of Star Citizen runs, and today, that consists of only Stanton. The replication layer then connects you to the DGS, and we play Star Citizen. The main limitation of this current workflow is that the game cannot scale. The replication layer being connected to a single DGS prevents Star Citizen's ability to scale. Another problem is that if the server dies, aka we experience a 30k error, the replication layer dies as well. As you can see, the game simulation and replication layer are both hosted on a single DGS, coupled together. This means that they are sharing the same compute resources as well, which leads to a compute resource bottleneck. What the replication layer split introduces is a complete evolution of the underlying architecture where it, along with other complementary microservices, are moved and hosted onto its own server or scale set. So now the replication layer and the DGS are separated, which allows the replication layer to communicate with more than one in the same shard. Now, as you can see, this opens up the door to the first implementation of server meshing. However, let's talk about what we might experience as players from just this replication layer split. First, let's revisit the discussion around shared compute resources. On a single DGS today, the replication and simulation are hosted on the same server as we already discussed. This means that their process or processes are sharing and utilizing compute resources such as CPU, memory, disk, and network throughput. With the separation, the compute resources used by the replication layer are freed for use by the simulation only. This means that we might, and I want to stress that this is purely my own speculation, that we may see some performance improvements. Number two. Secondly, the replication layer split will now enable the replication layer to do one of its central jobs in replicating session state between multiple DGSs which includes mitigating the dreaded effects of a 30k error or a dying server. So we should no longer be negatively affected by a 30k disconnection error and will now have our session preserved by the replication layer and rejoined to a new server to continue our gameplay sessions. Number three, the final detail as alluded to earlier is that now the replication layer is primed to introduce the first implementation or realization of true server meshing. That first iteration will be the static server meshing. So there you have it, and I hope it was helpful. My next episode in this manner will go over static server meshing and what that might look like for us. If you are not subscribed, please do so in order to be notified of all upcoming videos. Thanks for hanging out, happy gaming to you, and I will see you in the next one.